special thoughts to the family of uh, Annie Kill's father passed away and uh, the suits girl, uh, suits girl that passed away here recently. So passed away as well. Um, Craig, could you please lead us in the pledge? First up, we have uh, Nancy Harmon. Is this the right? I can just sit or stand, or how do I do it? Whoever keys those are, if you want to take them, you can ride. <laughs> That's your right. Wait, I'm taking someplace. <laughs> um, my concern is with common course. I don't know if this is something that should be addressed after you speak later or not. Now it's the time. Now it's the time. Okay. Well, um, the we all want the what's best for our kids, and I have I'm a retired educated retired educator in 2006, and I've seen the standards being implemented, and I've seen my fellow teachers retire, worn out, and kind of bogged down in all kinds of paperwork, and telling me that they can't teach the way they used to because their creativity is being stifled, 
and they have to test, 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 test. In fact, I watched one little fourth grader come in and take the same math test for the fourth time in a row in a week. He still didn't pass it. It's just one little instance. And I'm concerned about Common Core, really, um, and the federal control that it brings into our testing, which will drive the curriculum, which will drive the teacher evaluations, which it's already doing that, because I've seen it before I left. And now when the federal government is really kind of getting its tentacles in like it has into Obamacare, I just see the same sort of thing happening and I'm afraid our public schools are gonna go down in flames if people don't start um, opening their eyes to this and trying their best to have the states get the control back and do their own, their own work in standards. Because people who are on the the federal committees to do this in the first place have, have not even signed off on some of them because they said they're so bad. In fact, they would rather see the um, states revamp the whole process and do it from their own standpoint. So um, I think when I see Germantown School District being bumped up by 35% increase in enrollment this coming September, and I see New York trying to get out, but they can't. And I see um, my friend I just talked to today from Arizona who said her husband was evaluated um, this year according, he had um, a week to prepare because he didn't know when his supervisor was gonna come in and watch over him. So uh, he never knew when it was coming, which is fine, you know, educators are used to principals popping in any time to evaluate, that's great. But it took him two days of the weekend just to try and line up all the common core principles that he was supposed to do for that week. You know, it took him two full days at home in order to do this. And, you know, it's just an indication of how your creativity is stifled, you're loaded down with paperwork or computer work, and I, I don't like to see where it's going. I mean, after having two kids graduate from what I thought was one of the best schools in the state, and being a daughter of a school board president who was president for like 25 years, I firmly believe in good, solid education. But I know that these standards are taking out the great literature and replacing it with articles that are more of a progressive and um, I would say liberal bent, and a lot of people think that's wonderful. I happen to think it isn't. And the, the geography standards that are being written don't even have words in it like um, lake and ocean and um, city and state. I mean, but they're loaded with information about uh, things like um, global warming and the EPA and pollution and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm just seeing it go in a direction that makes me sad. And I think I, I know families who are pulling kids out of public schools left and right. And you're gonna see more homeschooling, more parochial schools, more private schools. And I hate to see public schools just die on the vine because of federal control. And oh, you need the money. That's always what drives it anyway. But when you see where the money comes from and how it's being used, it's frightening to me, and I, I am very much against it, and this is all I can do as a taxpaying citizen for the district that I loved, and continue, want to continue to see my little grandkids go to, but they probably will. So, um, I guess that's what I need to say at this point. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Grace Miller. What greatly disturbs me are the changes made to the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, the FERPA regulations. In May of 2011, the ACLU wrote a letter to the U.S. Department of Education. In this letter, the ACLU warned the U.S. Department of that there should be no creation of the National Student Database. <clears throat> they further stated the proposed rulemaking represents a significant new privacy invasion. 
The rules allow much greater access to students' personal information by state officials not working directly on education and by other governmental and private entities that are not traditional education providers. They further may allow for the sharing of personal information between states, paving the way for a national database of student records and substantially increasing the risk of lost records and identity theft. All of this information sharing occurs without a parent or student's consent and beyond their control. Common Core supporters will point out that there is nothing within the standards or rules which requires personal data to be acquired and that any data gathering is entirely up to the individual state. But it isn't that simple or even true. That statement is highly disputed with little research. The federal government has been prohibited from gathering students' specific data for a national database. But shortly after Obama became president, the stimulus bill provided a loophole. Money was given to each of the states to develop a longitudinal data system to catalog data generated by Common Core line tests. The mission to release student information collected since 2009 was then authorized to be shared among federal agencies without the consent of parents. Beginning in the 2014-15 school year, students under Common Core will begin taking state standardized tests and student-specific data will be stored by the states in the newly created longitudinal data system designed to track student progress from K through 12th grades. The type of material being collected due to the changes by the current administration is so extensive, one could say almost everything will be included some of which is highly personal. Of course, test scores will be collected, and be aware, Common Core encourages massive testing. What is strange and should be a red flag to reasonable people is why schools are also asking about students' hobbies, psychological evaluations, medical records, religious affiliation, political affiliation, family and some behavioral problems, disciplinary history, career goals, addresses, etc. As we all know, the feds have done so well in taking over our health care system. The feds have done so well in our VA hospitals and taking care of our veterans. The feds have done so well in protecting our borders. And now so many of you want to entrust our children's education to the federal government. Something just doesn't seem right here. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Tanya. My name is Tanya. Um, I am a parent of three children in the district, and I, for one, also um, am concerned with their future. Um, I would not be here today if I did not feel it was utterly important that the future of their education relies on us having control over their curriculum. Um, we can adopt things from the Common Core that we feel is necessary, but there's no way we should give up the control in our community, no. I will keep this short and sweet. I'm just one parent out of many in this community that feel that same way. I urge you to take considerable action against Common Core. Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Matt? <clears throat> hey guys, my name is Matt. Um, I don't have anything written up or prepared, but um, just a little uh, history is you know, kindergarten through through 12th grade, um, salutatorian. The, the, education that I, I got, you know, all the way through, I went to college, I had no problems. I didn't really need to study much because, you know what, I, I learned it here. And as my mother spoke earlier, um, I felt like I was in, the, in one of the best school districts in the state. Honestly, I still feel it is. I, I coached um, sports for eight years in this, in, uh, for the school district. Um, I served on the keys board for over five, and I, I want every kid that graduates from from this district to to be head and shoulders as 
as respectfully I feel like I was. And I don't feel that with the ton of research that my wife and I have done, and as I believe it was Tanya mentioned earlier, um, so many caring and concerned citizens in this, in, the, in this community have that going in the direction of Common Core and handing over the control to Washington, D.C. Is, is the right thing for the four children that I have that are coming up in the school district. One is going to be in first grade, second grade, second grade, thank you. Um, <laughs> one in kindergarten and the other two on the way. Um, and we moved from West Bend in October because we wanted to be in the school district. We were busing, I'm sorry, we were driving, my wife was driving every single morning from the south side of West Bend to here so my kids could come here, okay? We moved here for this reason. Please, please don't, don't hand, you know, our control off. Every one of you is elected, you know, because we, this community believes that you are, are, what's, are, are the smart people, the right people, and the people in place to make these decisions for our kids. Please, let's keep the control here, okay? Um, I guess that's what I have to say. Uh, Karen Reiner. I hate to beat a dead horse, um, Concord. Um, financially, I don't think, and I'm looking at financially, and as I was eavesdropping in on your last meeting and realizing what we need to pay in the budget, like insurance in case something happens to our children or anybody on the premises, and all the finances that need to be paid, why in the world were all intelligent people here? Why in the world would we let the federal government that has goofed up every single one of our finances, our insurances, and I can speak from experience. My husband is a vet, and he was delayed on his care. My children, we have adopted special needs children, was promised to us by the state that we would never have their insurance cut because they all have diseases that are not curable. All of a sudden, it's being cut, and we have nothing to say. Common Core is the same thing. You're all very intelligent people, or you would have never been elected by us. This I want. And I think I have a right to ask it, and you would all ask it. We need a balance sheet, financial balance sheet, because Common Core state standards, the federal money is gone as of the end of 2014. We haven't even implemented what they need. I was just listening to the computer, the network. I would like to know. Common core standard, state standards, will require a longitudinal database that connects to all states. Has anybody here heard about the federal insurance database that they can't even get up to stay up? Well, what do you think is going to happen with our kids' database? And the finances are going to be passed to us as taxpayers because the federal finances are done as of 2014. That's the first thing. You don't have to worry about writing this down. I'm just going to leave this here with you. Because hopefully, you can bring back a balance sheet. Current state adopted textbooks, textbooks will not align with Common Core. You can check that out with the people that have already implemented Common Core. Don't take my word for it. You're all intelligent people. We, had, we voted you in to check this out for us. All the places that have implemented Common Core have already started going into bankruptcy. Their school districts. Now, learn, learn from a place that didn't implement it. Germantown. People are flocking there. Germantown kicked it out. Kewaskum, you're all intelligent. Kick it out. Also, Common Core will require extensive professional development of the school administrators and teaching staff. Who's going to pay for it? Where's the money coming from? 
we're already being siphoned for the insurance that we have to pay for our staff. And that's only going to continue to go up. Does anybody see it going down? Hailstorms, rainstorms, tornadoes? I'm very upset, as you can tell by um, the way I'm talking, because we just had three neighbors being foreclosed on. Where are we going to get this money from? The Federals don't care. And they're the ones that implemented Common Core. Bill Gates, the biggest supporter of it, could care less about us. We don't exist. Our kids exist. They're worth fighting for and kicking the fence out. They don't know what they're doing. We do. And if we don't, as a community, we can join together and do it and learn what's best for our kids and keep that power. Common Core will also require large investments in technology. It's really funny that you were just talking about this. This gentleman back here, right here, no offense to you, but the technology that you're already bringing into the schools, it's outdated. It won't work with Common Core. Just like it wouldn't work for the insurance companies. I sat there, I'm one of these people, I sit there and I watch on TV when they're bringing everything forward in the government and they're voting on it. And the head people that run computers said, they knew it couldn't handle it. They knew it was, it was impossible for it to be implemented, but they pushed it through. The people that pushed it through, they're not intelligent like we are. They sat there and said, well, yeah, we didn't read it. Hey, it's over how many pages? We need to read it. Because once it's in, it's a nightmare. Let's us learn from the places that implemented it. They made the mistake. They're financially in wounds. I personally don't want to move out of the area because I'm being property taxed out. I don't know about you, but personally, I've only seen the taxes going up. Do I pay them? Yes. But maybe if you check even the property tax records, which are public. See how many have, are behind already for the year in the area? Include all the people that pay into the school taxes, Farmington, Kewasco, and whoever else. And see how many of those people are back behind on their property taxes. And we want to just add more? I don't think so. You guys are smarter than that. I know you are. I'm going to leave this with you, and I would really like a balance sheet. And I, I think I the voters could use a balance sheet. So what you're talking about is actually profit and loss. If I understand what you're asking for, you're asking for the cost of Common Core, is that what you're asking for? I'm asking for the future cost of Common Core and what we currently have coming in. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that that can keep coming in to the district. Okay, just asking for cost. That's all right. Okay. And uh, how much we currently have coming in that is actually paid, not owing. And as of 2014, how are we going to pay for that? Due or what? Pardon? You're talking about real estate taxes? Real that, estate that taxes. Due. So you're saying yes. people are behind. Yes, they are. Correct, because they're still catching up from the recession. I got it. Okay, thank you. Which we are not of. Thank you. Oh. Uh, so, next up is Jennifer. Can I read this to you? So that I can. Please have a balance sheet so that we can bring it before us voters and have it voted out. Oh, Dr. Hi, I'm just um, curious if the date had been set for 2015 graduation. Can you let us table that up for your meeting? It has not been set. We are going to be talking about the school calendar a little bit later. And okay. after that discussion, we should be able to do it in, in August or for sure by September. Okay, that concludes public comments. Um, on to number eight, recognition. Just want to uh, welcome and have everyone see that we have our.
two new uh, administrators here tonight. Mark Mazzotta is our curriculum director, and Janice Chapman is our people services director. And we welcome them aboard. Welcome. Um, I'm probably one of them. Oh, we have, we have other folks. See, he's, he's been around so much, we think he's been here forever. Uh, uh, new, new board member, we've got Craig Staffan here with us, and we have to get him on board as well. So, more positive things. Uh, on to number nine, consent agenda. Do we have any questions or comments? These are positions that are open and we're just refilling them. Correct. Well, we can open for quite some time and the freshman assistant coach uh, relocated out of your happy first. I think he's coming back, but it's not for this one also. Fred, do you know um, the resignation of Kate and Kate? And when do we have we are interviewing on Thursday, I believe. Okay, we've got a first and a second. Um, all in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda has passed. Uh, on number 10, old business board retreat date. Just wanted to solidify that on uh, July 28th, two weeks from tonight, at Cedar Settlement, we will have our <coughs> annual board leadership team retreat. Um, we'd ask that you be there at 3:30. Um, we will have dinner sometime between five and six, and then conclude it by 7:30. Correct. Uh, Correct. Um, school year change, we were discussing that. Yeah, I brought a calendar uh, of this current school year, and just as a reminder or an update that the legislature in their last session approved dropping the 180 day requirement and basing it strictly on hours and minutes of instruction. What is the year for Excuse me? <coughs> Um, let me grab that real quick for you here. For K through 6, it's 1,050 hours. And for 7 through 12, it's 1,137 hours. 1,137. Right now, um, at the high school, and there is a DPI uh, computation hours of instruction per statute that you can go on and fill out. And this is the high school computation. They are at uh, 1,340 hours, excuse me, 1,196 hours. So they are 59 hours over. And I apologize, I have to find my other papers. Shirley, do you remember what uh, the middle school was? Mine would be the first <coughs> elementary because we did not have any. I, I'm, I'm sorry. WPC. It's right here. I apologize. And for the elementary, it's 1,127 and 1,050 are needed. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, about 177 hours over and the middle school is 
the instruction is um, 1,230 and 1,137. So the point is, is that through the computations at all three grade levels, they are well above the state um, expected numbers in hours. So what I would propose to the board to think about and come back with how they would like to, to move forward with the current uh, calendar, it mirrors what we did this year and it was uh, approved before the change in the state law took place. So we are ending on a corresponding day of June, a Tuesday, which is June 9th. Um, I am proposing, given the fact that we have literally tens, twenty, or at least a minimum of 70 hours more than what's needed for a year, that we look at um, ending school on June 5th instead of June 9th. And moving the September 16th um, break day, winter break day, um, that was also a snow makeup day if needed. February 16th? Yes. I'm sorry, did I say February 16th? I'm sorry. February 16th, um, making that a school day, that would take care of one of the other two days, of the two days. And then the, the second day, you have a choice. Um, the, the spring break for this year is April 3rd, Friday, Good Friday the 3rd, and it goes through Tuesday the 7th, that either you have that break just be a, a Monday, Friday, and add back in a school day on April 7th, or given the fact that there are, we're way over in hours, um, having 179 days instead of 180 and making um, that day a professional development day so the teachers would still work for their 180 days, um, but the, the students could be done on June 5th. So really that's just taking one day that is one of the options available. You can reduce it by one day and on June 5th, keep April 7th uh, for Easter break, or put April 7th back in and then both of those days would be made up. But I would, I would propose that no matter what you do, that February 16th becomes a school day and that we end on June 5th. And whether you want to make that other day up and, and have them come on April 7th or not make that day up and have that, uh, and we'll figure out how to make that 180th day for the teachers, professional development, whether it's April 7th or June 8th, however it would work out. Um, but that way, the kids would be done on June 5th. And then we'd have graduation that weekend then? Well, then that leads to that question, which is, <laughs> you can keep it on Sunday, June 7th, um, which would be the corresponding date to this year, and at two o'clock, um, I don't know if anybody's heard any complaints about that. Um, besides, it's always hot. Um, the only other day that you could think about doing it because of a myriad of sports and other activities that are going on, it would be Wednesday, June 3rd. I would not recommend that you try to do it on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday because of state track meets and a lot of other things that are going on those days. So if you don't want to do it on a school night, a lot of school districts do it on a school night, um, but if you don't want to do it on a school night because that's not tradition here, um, then I would suggest that you keep it on Sunday, June 7th. Okay. 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 Okay.
I have not heard any complaints about Sunday on Sunday at two yes. o'clock. Is that something we could discuss and from the board on tonight because it, the school calendar is on the agenda because the first graduation has to be uh, made specific so we can discuss and settle on that. We would have to uh, put it on the calendar as a graduation date to, to specifically identify that for next time. Okay. So we have uh, yes. And in trying, in trying to get things to you a month ahead of time or a little bit ahead of time uh, when we can so you don't hear Hold on this. Um, so, so you're looking at the fifth would be the last day of school? Correct. And then we'd be eliminating February 16th, they'd be in school then? Correct. Mm -hmm. And then maybe eliminating April 7th as an off, that would be their spring break, and you would have school on the 7th. That's our discretion. Or not making that day up <coughs> and have that be a PD day. Wait, I think in the thought process here of snow days, we have, can that 7th be like an open day or not? We need it, we can use it. If not, you see what I'm saying? We can always, yep. we've done it before, we've changed it at the tail end. Right, great question. And that what's precipitated the, the change in the law. We don't have to do that anymore. Um, we have plenty of hours in to, if we do have a snow day or two, we're still we, we still have way days. many more hours than need be. So even if we have to pull a day, we're still okay. Correct. According to my count, we can pull seven before we Right, so we can move forward. We can actually say we don't have to worry about school uh, pick up days for school days at all. Correct. And I think part of the law is I believe Florence District last year had 16 snow days. So, I mean, we're, we're rather fortunate. I, I, my hat goes off to Johnson Bus. They are awesome. Um, and they're wonderful to work with. Um, and it's been, you know, we here you have one, two, maybe three in a given year. Um, so we're, we're, we're definitely in good shape as far as the minutes and hours. Of totally yeah, there's an idea of the savings of 10 grand a day if we can capitalize on that. Well, and, and we can look at that moving forward for mm -hmm. next year. Uh, the next calendar because we um, kind of had this one already approved. Yep. Uh, I guess the uh, the one thing I would mention for historical perspective is at some point in history there was a early release time on Wednesdays and that was changed and so kids started coming back to school and all those hours were put back into the school year and that's why we have so many that were way above because we just added those back into the school year, which is which is fine, um, but that's what gives us our cushion. So, any any thoughts? Whether uh, leave them off on the seventh and make it a professional development day or make that school day, I'm leaning towards professional development day. And then the seventh being gone, and then the sixteenth. The 16th, everybody comes to school. Yep. Of February. And the 7th. And the 7th is a PE day. Yep. Or if you wouldn't mind, I'll go back to the leadership team and see if we can make sure that we get 180 days in for the teachers, um, whether it's a PE day that day or. or um, the kids would still have off. No matter what, the kids would have off on the 7th and we wouldn't do the busing. So I make a motion we approve the 2014 2015 school year calendar as such? We have to say that next time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hearing that June 7th at 2 o'clock is what you want. I, I would agree. So can you give me information that we put that on? Mm -hmm. And that the motion this time, so I have it correctly, is that there are new um, a bridge. The, Calendar. I think we just need to amend it. Amend the school calendar so February 16th is a school day, and that April 7th is a professional development day, um, unless the district administration comes back with a, a different day. But either way, the kids will have off that day. Okay. Is there a second? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That passes. On to the Common Core update. Um, <coughs> we are going to be addressing Common Core um, on the August 11th board meeting. Um, they'll take up the bulk of the <coughs> session. Uh, we'll bring forth more details at that time, but um, I know there's some work already being done by the administrative team to prep for that. Um, and that will be right within the regular board meeting, make it convenient for people to come in for that. Is there any questions and answers? Form and question, question and answer if there's going to be a prepared piece uh, for administration so that we can get some of the Usually you, you have a board workshop that addresses the that, mm -hmm. and then you have obviously time for questions. <coughs> Not only on that, it's going to be a board. It will be part of the board meeting. Correct. Any comments, any questions? Let's hear that. item 11 new business uh, payroll mr fisher uh, i'd like to make a motion to approve june payroll invoices for one million three hundred and ninety one thousand excuse me seven hundred five dollars and sixty seven cents to approve the June accounts payable for $537,997.18. Second? All second. Uh, we'll call this one. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Eaglehoffman? Yes. Mr. Stanton? Yes. Mr. Leister? Yes. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Item C, bids for purchases over 15000 Mr. <coughs> uh, we had a finance committee meeting uh, before uh, uh, 5 o'clock or 5.30 tonight, and there are some bids for purchases over $15,000 that um, the finance committee has asked for a motion to approve from the full board. Um, first one, we'll just take them individually. Uh, literacy, uh, the finance committee is recommending a motion to forward this to all of you for approval. Um, uh, they are looking at literacy a contract of black and black for a hundred and forty thousand. Um, Jim, do you want to talk a little bit about? It? Yeah, in, in your packet you had the breakdown of how much was for elementary, the other part was for secondary. It was for one hundred forty thousand dollars for one hundred and twenty-six contract days. Title two monies um, would pay for forty thousand dollars of it. Um, IDEA monies, uh, special education funds would be paid for 27 because it will affect also special education and the other $73,000 will come out of fund 10 um, for the summer and school year projects. In fund 10 in our regular Budget, we had to budget seventy-three thousand dollars for the total cost of one hundred and forty. Black and black consists of. It's a company, a vendor. Um, they've been helping us out with our co-teaching model. Mr. 
Mrs. Miller? Oh, yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Yohan? Yes. Mr. Stanton? Yes. Mr. Leister? Yes. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Well, if I, Finance Committee is recommending uh, to the full board uh, course switch K-12 technology for $102,624. Make a motion on that as well. We approve the K-12 proposal. Finance Committee is also making a motion uh, to pull forward to the full board uh, using K-12 technology contract, approving a three-year contract at $3,000 a month. Take a motion to approve the K-12 contract. District notifies the Health Technology Group that they're not satisfied. Uh, we request that you provide information regarding what areas of the agreement you're not satisfied with. We can obviously to uh, accommodate how far address those issues and the district it, with formal notice of any ways to be set up. And the Finance Committee is also asking a motion to forward to the full board for approval of pro property and casualty insurance and using EMC Liberty LGPIF for $164,612.
<laughs> Some of the districts had really high spending in those years for whatever reason. Either they were high spending districts or they for one year had to spend a lot of money for capital improvements or whatever. And so those districts started off with a higher base. And then some districts were spending low. And maybe they spent low all the time and they were used to it, but maybe they spent low for one year because the previous year they had money left over. Those are the ones that got penalized because that became your base. And then each year we get an additional amount. Now there's no guarantee that it's going to be this amount. There's no guarantee that it's going to be an additional amount. In fact, a few years ago, we lost. I mean, you guys don't remember that. Um, but we've had $75 per pupil increase this, this second year in a row. We're happy for it. We'd like more, of course. But this is all built upon a base. So the schools that spend more, um, they get rewarded? Yes. In 1992, everybody was locked in at the rate that they were spending up at that time from 1993. So if you were a frugal district in 1992, you got locked in at a lower number. That has not changed in over 20 years. It was, a, um, it was an opportunity to reduce property taxes that the then Governor Tommy Thompson initiated, knowing that it was a five, maybe a five year uh, adjustment to try to limit how property taxes went. He also committed two-thirds funding for all school districts at the time, which is 66%. We don't get close to 66%. We're down like about 37%. So some of the rules have changed, while some of the rules have stayed the same. But in the end, it, it's a formula that penalized frugal districts back in 1992 or three. So when we talk about building the budget and then taking the original budget, making the changes and then come up with the new budget, that's how we were reported out to. So it was the 1314 budget and the 1415 budget and the change. And when we reported this out in April, it was not the 143, it was that other number that we had talked about, the 135271. So really I think the difference in the operating budget between April and now is just eight thousand dollars. And it could still change again. October, but this is the budget we're taking for the annual meeting. Special education, we've reported a zero, and I can guarantee you this number is going to change because between now and October, we're going to find out um, after our audit um, what our special ed categorical aid is going to be, what our grant programs are going to be, and that's going to impact this number. Um, remember on the special education, it, it can't end the year with a surplus or a deficit. We have to transfer that money to the general operating fund, we call that an inner fund transfer. And the reason I'm bringing it up again is because you're going to see it at the end when we combine the funds. This is a special revenue trust fund, the donation fund. Um, pretty impressive in the School District. We didn't report on this in April. Um, we're giving you a conservative budget for 14-15. We had adjusted the 13-14 to match actual a little bit. 
we don't want to assume it's going to be that great again next year where it will be a little more conservative. The 50,000 is, is an average for the last five years. Debt service fund 38, this is the non-referendum debt. Remember, this is the debt that we have to pay for within our revenue limit. Um, when this drops off, that frees up more money for our budget. This has not changed since April. That's the, not the short term borrowing, but the 10, <coughs> ten year. Uh, in this district, it was two things. It was, uh, it was a, a loan that was refinancing um, an older loan at a higher interest rate, and then it also was for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. And that was that statutory million dollar limit. So when, we, when we did the WRS, then that, that capped us all. That's the other one, right. That's the other one. That capped, that capped us the million dollars that kept that. Yeah. Because we didn't even have enough. We had to pull some of that out of the budget to carry that through. We didn't have enough volume. Right. That worked. Yeah. We, we've capped it out, and it's over a million dollars. And we don't know exactly what the rules are, but it's over a million dollars, so we think it's capped out. But there's some one, special, yeah. there could be like 300000 that we could try to re-borrow against, but we're not in the position of having to do that for next year. Okay. Um, this one is going to have the fund 38, the non referendum we were just talking about, has the two components. One of them is going to be paid off um, around 2019, the rest of it until 2022, but that remaining piece is pretty small, like 180 a year or something like that. That's cool. 39 is going to be completely paid off in 2019. That was the um, referendum debt. We asked permission from the taxpayers and got money to build the elementary school. <coughs> now remember, referendum debt though, when it gets paid, when it gets paid off, that does not free up money for our budget. That um, reviews tax first and it goes back to the taxpayers. <laughs> Food service, this is our biggest change. Uh, we had come to you originally with uh, Increase in the budget of about $43,000, and we're almost doubling it now based on uh, her expectation for revenues. Um, Terry Miller is being very conservative, and I agree with her, so she built her budget based on those conservative um, estimates. It's not all uh, due to participation. We have talked about participation being an issue now. Um, it's also because they've been very um, proactive in getting grants, and some of those grants are falling off. Community service fund is for a community recreation programs. There's a bit of a change on this one too from what we reported in April, um, and that's based on um, aligning it with the actuals for this year. Our revenues came in a lot higher, but we also found that our um, salaries and pensions needed to be corrected. And these are all the funds combined. <coughs> so when you approve the budget, you will actually be doing it by that higher number, the one that's third from the bottom. And actually, I forgot to put one of these in your budget books, but I like the way this looks. But remember, we've got that inner fund transfer. Remember, the inner fund transfer on books is reported as a, um, a revenue to the special education and then an expense to the general operating. So all it does is falsely inflate those numbers. And so when we report to you on the the budget, we subtract it out to show you those are our real expenditures. Those, that's what we expect our expenditures to be, the bottom line. We just have to report that higher number, even though it's just on paper. Oh, this is what we didn't know in April. The equalization aid estimate, July 1 came out. Um, they're estimating a 3.63% <coughs> increase in equalization aid that's about $278,000. That's better than last year. This is really good. Now remember, equalization aid does not impact our budget, though. It, what it impacts is our levy. So we've got the pie, two pieces of the pie, the levy, the equalization aid. When the equalization aid goes up, the levy goes down. And this is what we're seeing between the revenue limit and um, the revenue limit forcing us to reduce our budget plus the additional equalization aid, we're looking at a decrease.
increase in property taxes over half a million dollars, 4.9 percent. This is an estimate, but it's it's, it's good. This is this is good. Okay. If you go back to that slide before, um, just wanted to point out that if you go down to 2000, 2001, it was at 7960 we're at 7946 So we're getting the same state aid as we did in 2000, 2001. So the good news is, is it went up for the first time in five years, and that coupled with the reductions that have been made over the last four years of over $2 million out of the budget is now finally, finally going to help the taxpayers of this district, and it is going to reduce their property tax rate. Our part of the property tax rate um, by almost $600,000. So that's good news for our taxpayers. What is the difference between the enrollment of that picture tie and how many kids do we have that day? How many kids do we have? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I've seen that graph enough times that I'm pretty sure it's less. We have less kids then. Yeah, there was a, I don't know if it was in 04 or 05, there was a spike. Seven. Seven. Was it 07 when the spike started? When, when the big, right, yeah, see that, see that spike there? That, that wasn't just a spike in the revenue, that was our, that was our spike in, in, in enrollment. Right. So, you saw a spike and now we're going back down. And just, again, there's less kids in Washington. County. There's less kids in the state of Wisconsin than there was five years ago, or ten, 10 years ago. There's just less kids, period. And uh, those of you who were with us last fall, you know how I feel about the tax rate. Um, I just, I get concerned because it's not the mill rate, and I don't want the public or anyone to get confused with what the, the municipalities actually levy. Um, it really has no value because normally from year to year your property value, which is certified by the state, that by our local, right, it changes. And so um, it's going to skew it. Now today we're making the assumption that our property values haven't changed. And so what it's doing is it's actually reflecting the 4.9%, which is what the actual levy is. Um, but once we get our um, value certified and we pop that number in there, then maybe we can't even compare from year to year. It's just not a good number. Um, but I know everybody likes to see it, so we, we put it out there for now. So what we're seeing is a tax rate, not a mill rate, going from 10.19 to 9.69, which is a reduction of 50 cents per thousand, or that 4.9 percent. But the, the numbers are 11,750 last year, we're going to be, property taxes will be 11174 or a decrease of almost $600,000. So however else that comes out in the wash with mill rates and everything else, we can't predict that because that, that there's a lack that goes into those forms. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you.
what I, I'd like the board to do is, is take this with you. We're going to have this on the next month's agenda as well. And I want to uh, get some input on additions, deletions, modifications to this document. Or if you really motivated, a complete rework of this document um, for our school board evaluation. If I discuss anything now, we could. I mean, obviously, you just got it in your hands. There's not a lot of prep to done on this, but that's kind of where we're going with this. And again, trying to discuss this and then bring it back to just kind of review and figure out the strategy. So, just to be clear, do you want us to, to look at the process here, the form itself, a little bit here? We're not going through the, the evaluation nope. process yet. Nope, not right here. All right. So, red pencils out. That's all I had on that. Let's see what else has it. Sure, this is for the board to evaluate our function, correct? Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay, with that, we're into uh, on 12A, superintendent's report. Mr. Smazel. Just a, a couple of uh, housekeeping things. We made a copy of the committees and different uh, ways to get a hold of board members and who's on what committee. Um, as a FYI for you. Also, at your table, um, you see that the draft of the NEOLA policies uh, came in literally this morning. Um, so you have you have your your draft copies. It's in two different binders. The zero through four hundred are the top one, and then five through nine is the bottom one. Um, and. I think for now, um, since we just got it today, there is a, a form on the top that Neola um, gave. It's a very simple form about, as you're going through it, if you see something um, incomplete or inappropriate or something that uh, you didn't, um, you found to be a question that you could uh, put it on that form. We can expand the this form. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not really yeah, depth, is it? One form for all of it. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're proud of what you know. So. I take offense to that. We did a, we did a lot we of work did with those six months. Several days. Solid days. Four solid days. Five. What are we saying? Five. 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 It was very intense. Okay. So, very Grace, thank you for your work on yes. that. Obviously, you can see that <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Um, but it was five full days. Okay. So these are our copies. Those are your copies to take with you. Um, Mary has copies for the two policy Correct. committee people, um, and she will be delivering them. Yes. And we'll, we'll have to decide how you want to move forward. But I, I believe. For now, I think it's just um, good for you to take them, and on August 11th, you'll decide on how you want to do this. There's a myriad of ways you can do it. Um, I would suggest that potentially we look at a two meetings, often um, one for the one binder, one for the other. Um, well, I'm just saying that they suggest that you have a, a board meeting to go over the draft in any changes or anything that you saw was out of line. So maybe in the August 11th meeting, one of the things on the agenda will be zero through 400. Does anybody have any problems, questions, issues with it? Please make sure that you write down those and, and send them ahead of time so we can get your questions answered. And then maybe we do it on September 11th and have the second part of it. And that would be like the first reading each time. If, if there is no changes to it, you can do a first reading. Right. The other okay. thing is when you go through it, all the QOS and stuff is implemented in here, but you might have to go back to our original policy book and then you read the OLAs and then you'll have to kind of find our wordage, verbiage in, and it dovetails right in, in the OLA stuff. So if you, yeah, if you're, I'm just saying, if you're looking for Certain okay, things, right, and you want to make sure ours is in there, you're going to have to go to our policy book and then you're going to have to read through this and then follow it along and then our stuff is kind of dovetailing. Because there were awesome reading. I think Jay has invited some people over on Saturday. Um, <laughs> Pretty good <laughs> to ask. <laughs> yeah. 
But there was a lot of really good work that went into these. Pretty much a lot. A lot. And there were a few policies that did come to the board for discussion when we wanted opinions and such. So hopefully this is the Yes. So there is just a lot. So the second. So for sure, we are going to go through the first stack for the next meeting. We should be prepared to bring. I just want to know my deadline. Well, I think if you got questions, if you go through and get questions before the meeting, get a hold of Jim right. and work it out before the meeting. If there isn't anything major, we can go through. That way we can get the first reading done at that meeting. I, I, I don't want to doubt you. I just don't think you're going to find much in there. Because any problems we have, we brought to the board. Because right? we, we didn't want to get to this point, and then we're going to be sitting on the table for the next six, seven months. I still have to read it all, Jim. I get it. I know. <laughs> well, and so much of this statutes and laws. Well, a lot of it's federal when you get into the person else. Federal, federal, state. federal. So it's very entertaining. It's possible it's pretty comprehensive. It is. It's, it's our district will be in a good place. So the second part of, our, uh, of my report is the update on goals and I will hand out a, um, a packet for each of you to take with you um, in, in the what I did is I took what was handed to you in, in January, and then in red, you'll have the updates. There were <coughs> nine goals for the district through the superintendent's um, seat. The first one was, um, and these goals were uh, established uh, by me and the leadership team back in August, September. And the first one was online learning through the Wisconsin Youth School available for our students at the beginning of the school year. There is a report in the back of your uh, handout that I will give you that gives you the uh, concise, up-to-date, what happened this year on that. Um, I think overall we could say that uh, it was cost neutral to the district, so that's a good thing. Um, we did help out 16 students. We did get some kids back that would have left if we didn't have this program, um, but I think Deep down in our hearts, I think that we thought there would be a more of an interest in it. So either we're going to have to promote it better and do more public relations, um, align it more with the KCA and what's going on at the KCA, um, because it, it needs a little bit more of a kickstart. The second goal was to complete the charter school research and determine whether or not to pursue by April, which we did. Um, we will find out literally two weeks from today. Um, or two weeks from tomorrow, um, it's going to be right at the beginning of the uh, end of the month. So we should know in a couple of weeks if we did the grant or not. Um, I will reiterate that I think we did everything in our power to write the best grant we can. Um, we had people working on it um, that did an excellent job, Joel and Heidi, and we also brought in a grant writer to just um, look it over to make sure that it was done correctly. Uh, we submitted it on time. We talked to the people we needed to talk to. But it's a competitive grant. And we found out over the years that competitive grants are competitive. And only 50% of the people get it. And so we're hoping that we're one of the 50%. Um, so we will know that shortly. But as far as the goal of doing the research and writing the grant and doing the best job of in writing the grant, we definitely um, succeeded at that goal. The third goal was to build monthly communication calendars for the leadership team and district office. Um, a lot of credit has to go to Vicki Kuczynski. She has done an outstanding job not only with our web page, um, but with Facebook and with facility usage calendars and helping Doug out with that. Um, we have very minimal problems with uh, people using our facilities and as you all know, they're used 24-7, 365, and uh, it's a credit to not only Vicki, but to, to Doug and the rest of the maintenance crews that, that we are doing so well. Um, so overall, I think we definitely met that goal, but we have, it's a, it's a work in progress. We'll, we will never be able to sit on our laurels with communication, because as you saw in the survey, one of the things that they talked about in the survey was to keep the communication lines even more open. So we're going to have to do a better job of that. So we're going to keep working on that. 
Um, and I think better means that we have to look at uh, Twitter accounts and we have to look at how we're going to get some of the, uh, the information out there in uh, a form that people can readily get to. Um, and the second thing, and probably the most important of it, I think we really need to emphasize with our teachers that keeping their grade book up, um, up to date is probably the area that when we look at the survey results, if we were to segregate that data, it's, it really is bothersome if a parent takes the time to go to the grade book and it's three weeks behind. Um, that is something that we just can't afford to do anymore. Um, so we will be working on that as, as a goal moving forward. But ultimately, I, I think it is a work in progress and, and um, a lot of hard work by a lot of people. So I think we achieved that goal. Uh, the fourth one was uh, having administration competent with the evaluation of teachers through the teacher effectiveness training um, and understanding the components of quality teaching models. And again, a lot of credit goes to Darcy and Ann. Um, they were our ethics, they were our resident experts in this area. Uh, for next year, Mark will be one of the resident experts and Julie Skelton will take on that role. Jan is going to get what she can this year and we're gonna to look to train her the following year. Um, she's got a, a few things on her plate already. Um, so we're going to work her into that. Um, so I, I would match what we've done as a district and that's a credit to our administrative team, by the way. Um, with any other district in the state of Wisconsin, be ready for this rollout for this year. So uh, we went above and beyond because they even changed some of the rules on SLOs. You only need to have one or <coughs> two. So we had two this year. So um, we are prepared. And we've done about as good a job as anybody could expect us to do. The fifth one was the new compensation schedule for the teaching staff. And um, I believe in August of last year, we had a, a very um, far-reaching goal of having the salary uh, increases for the teachers for this past school year done before the school year started. And uh, we didn't quite get there, but I think we had it done at the end of September, so we were pretty close. Um, it kind of backed us up a couple of months. And then we found out about MRA, and we found out all the problems that other school districts were having with their salary schedules, and that they weren't sustainable, they didn't have the money, they weren't as maybe well thought out as, as they would hope to, and that's what happens when people take chances and, and do something new, forge into new territories. Um, so we're learning from their mistakes, and we also hired MRA, and we've had our meetings with MRA, and so far they, I think they've been going pretty well. I think we've got two really committed people that want to see our district do a good job in this. Um, so maybe we didn't get it done by the end of this year like we originally thought, but by January I had already mentioned that that probably wasn't a, a realistic goal. And then we had to recalibrate that goal and get MRA and be ready to, uh, to move and, and make this a good compensation schedule that everybody can be proud of. And we certainly did meet that goal. The sixth goal was staying under the approved budget. And even though Julie uh, will not commit to anything for another four to six weeks, as far as everything um, turned in, and um, we know for sure the exact numbers and close out the 13, 14 school year, um, I'm happy to report, relieved to report that we are very, very confident that we will be um, hundreds of thousands of dollars under budget. So, surplus. surplus. So we will be able you to- save hundreds of thousands. Two to 300,000, maybe even more than 300. Um, we had Dips. some- <laughs> um, Dips we, are building ground. You know, and out of a $22 million budget, that's about a 1%, 1.5%. So even though it seems like a lot of money, it's about a one, one and a one to one and a half percent within that range. So we're definitely right on, right where we want to be. What we want to always be is where we're at this year. So um, the ongoing legal situation, we will be able to put money into fund balance. We will be able to take care of that ongoing without affecting any of our current fund balance, as well as it increasing our fund balance to potentially take care of some things that come up in the future. So um, 
very happy to report that that goal was met. Uh, at the January meeting, uh, I updated and added three more goals on for the school year. One of them was to finish the insurance. And again, I give a lot of credit to Julie Thorson um, and to the insurance committee who worked tirelessly at getting that done. Hiring AFG and then having Humana come in um, got us out of the, uh, the co-op, um, which was one of our goals. We did that and we did it with a reduction in cost to our, our people and not costing the district any more money. Um, the current amount that we give to uh, pay for the, the insurance has not changed now in years. So that cost has not increased in at least three years, if not more. Um, and the out-of-pocket expenses is definitely within the realm of uh, expectation based on what other school districts have their people pay. So in the spirit of trying to attract and retain quality teachers, um, we are well within that range as far as offering our insurance package. So we are um, really fortunate to have brokered such a, a great deal. So kudos to everybody and that was certainly a goal that was met. Uh, visionary committee, uh, I would say that there were some bumps along the way, but in the end, if you look at the end in mind, and, and the end is what's, what's important, we put together a school perception survey that 655 people returned, a 34% return rate, which is the highest that school, perce school perceptions has ever had in the 15 to 20 years that he has been doing this. So kudos to our community for returning the survey. The information that we have and we can glean from that survey is uh, very accurate, something that we can rely on. In other words, very reliable information that we can build a strategic plan off of and know very confidently that this is what our community wants us to do. So in the end, um, I think that's what we started off a year and a half, two years ago almost now, with the strategic planning that we started in September, October of 2012. The ultimate goal was to reach out to our community, get as many people as possible, and try to help us and say, help, we need help, what do you value, what do you want us to do, and we've done that. Um, so ultimately the vision committee was a success based on, based on the fact that we will make it a high priority to use what that information gave us. And then finally, the NEOLA process, um, which was very comprehensive, we already covered that, uh, we did finish by the end of April, which was the goal. Um, it has taken NEOLA a bit longer than we anticipated to get us these drafts back, but now we have them, um, and we're moving forward on that. So kudos again to the people that were on that committee um, because we were able to achieve that goal. So those are the, the nine goals that were articulated, and I have that handout for you. And February 28th will be a strategic planning session. Um, part of what we will talk about with the board is what is our strategic plan for next year. So looking to set the goals together as a, as, a, as a team with the board and the leadership team. So when we finish on the 28th, that we know what the three or four things that we want to work on for next year are. Obviously, the July 28th. My so, um, July 28th. So, thank you to everybody um, because nobody does things in a vacuum. And kudos to all the hard work the board and leadership team has done over the past year. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Thorson, this manager's report. Um, we have the financial report year to date. Remember, it's not the final.
said there wasn't going to be any money left over, and that's about right. He went to 19% for the gas and 105 for the electric. It was sort of what we were expecting. And then the last thing you have is the annual meeting agenda. And this is the same thing that we presented last year with the dates and the names and the times changed. Um, if you want to make any changes, I believe what you do is contact Mr. Hansen and then Mr. Hansen will work with Mr. Swazel. But it's kind of a canned agenda. Mm -hmm. And we will be posting this in the newspaper. That's true, it's better Tuesday night. Two different dates on here. We got 25th at the top of 26th under. That's never mind. Last year. Oh, yeah. My bad. Julie did fine. Sorry. August 25th is the 25th, that Monday. Yeah. Fourth Monday. And you said, or you didn't set that much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.